What's up guys, it's Poir, bringing you guys the best weapon guides for the new hunting game, Wild Hearts. These guides are aimed to specifically show you the best combos to do so you can output optimal DPS fast and hard against the Komodos of Azuma. All button references will be that of a PlayStation controller layout. If you find this guide useful, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more Wild Hearts content. Do you want to become a Survey Corps member and defeat the Titans of Azuma with the most safest and fastest and funnest weapon in the game? Well, enter the Clawblade. Besides bow, this is my second favorite weapon now, one of the coolest weapons in the game. So the game plan for Clawblade is to build up meter with the normal attacks, then hit the monster with your right trigger claw plunge, or from jumping from various Karakuri, to essentially latch on to your enemy and become a kite in the air with the monster as your anchor. You can do various whirlwind attacks while airborne, all of which home in on your target after pressing right trigger. You can iframe dodge with a special jump Clawblade has, and you do insane distant dodges midair to avoid any attack. And you stay up for a laughably long time. But, while simple in mechanics and combo input, there is going to be a skill requirement of deciding when it's going to be safe to pull an attack in, or when you should dodge and wait. For the basics, you build up this meter here with square and triangle attacks as well as jumping attacks, then you hit R2 for your claw plunge attack. You'll see this little yellow circle gauge appear, and how much you have of that is determined by how much meter you built up before doing the R2. If you do the R2 by itself with no meter, you have very little gauge to work with, so it's never worth doing without some meter built up. This gauge depletes over time, and doing actions like dodging with circle, or hitting R2 again to pull yourself in to do the buff light and strong attacks will also consume gauge. And getting hit by a monster also consumes your gauge. But jumping with X in midair, however, does not, but that does eat your stamina. And while airborne, you can get a second buff after landing a few buffed attacks. Again, hit R2 to pull in and then hit square or triangle and you start getting energy around your character. After about 2-3 to three good landed hits, you'll be in full burst mode with a red aura. You can then choose to stay in this mode where it gives your pulled in square attacks additional hits or you can end the airborne state with a pulled in triangle attack doing a whirlwind into a dive attack that deals huge damage but this will drain all your meter and you'll have to repeat the process of building back up. And as mentioned, your jump now has iframes for some reason and you can use it to cancel any attack string to dodge an attack or even delay the big super once. We can only do this once while in midair before having to touch the ground again to use it again. And for the midair dodge, you can hold circle or B in Xbox's case to extend the dodge even further, which is pretty silly. <laughs> but don't get too far, otherwise your chain will break and you can end your chain as well by hitting R1 to sheath your weapon. And last important thing to know that many claw users ahead of my stream fail to do is you can build while attached to the monster still. So as long as you're grounded, you can build any Karakuri. So while spamming Attack on Titan theme song is cool and all, you can set up traps and such to make landing your super a guarantee. Now it is time for the combos. First, the best way to build meter. If you hit on the ground with a square combo, you build very little meter. You never want to do this, so you actually want to jump and then smash square and you build a lot more meter, faster, and you get a buff that glows yellow. It's very subtle to notice in a day, so it wasn't too obvious a mechanic to even know about, but if you hit the monster with an R2 claw attack while the buff is active, you get even more gauge. So the best combo is jump, square combo, then at the end of the animation, hit triangle into an R2 claw grab, and boom, you instantly got full meter in one combo. No Kari Kuri needed. You just need to make sure not to hit R2 too soon. You want to do most of the triangle attack animation, and even if you miss with the claw attack afterwards, if you spam it or keep attacking, you still retain that yellow buff effect. But if you stop attacking, it'll disappear in like one second. The alternative combo is against a taller monster. Hit the jump button midair and you can go into a second flurry of light attacks. Also, you can only dodge once as I mentioned earlier, so it is not an infinite combo. But this is nice if you mistime your attack and the monster doesn't attack. You can instead dodge it midair and continue the onslaught. The other two alternatives are 2-3 to three cube stacking jump, which gives you varying degrees of meter. 50% at 2 stacks and 70%-ish at 3 stacks, assuming you had 0 meter. One stack is never worth it as it barely gives you more than the standing R2, but the other way is the helicopter one, which swings the chain like a helicopter as you slowly float down, pretty cool. 
but that gives you about 30% gauge too. While you can build enough energy to do your super aerial attack with just 30%, you have zero leeway for dodging, so it is more likely to fail than the first non-Karakuri combo. The state Karakuri actually gives you like 70% meter if you can land the claw attack. This was super inconsistent against smaller monsters, but against say the pig, it's probably the go-to move. And last combo is when you're hooked on to the monster and ready to become an official Survey Corps member against the Titans of Azuma. This will be the best DPS you can do, so here is the combo. Pull in with R2, then hit square while holding left or right. Once you eventually get to red aura, this will extend how long you can spin for, dealing huge damage against big monsters and covering a large distance. If it is a small monster, you don't want to hold any direction, so you can attack at the lowest point in a vertical line. Holding upward seems to never be worth it against most fights, because you miss most of your hits. But yeah, repeat that combo while dodging when needed, and once near the end of your gauge, pull in and press square one more time, except this time without direction so you can tack in place. Then, this is important, hit triangle near the end of the animation. This will cancel straight into the super claw animation instead of having to hit R2 into triangle afterwards. And we're not done. Right when you do the big hit, hit triangle or dodge with X, and you'll cancel the animation, allowing you to do combo one again immediately, which can get you to full energy in three seconds for you to repeat this combo. Or you can use stake as well midair too. But this is the most DPS you can do. Be mindful of your gauge when doing the super though, as if you do this when there's only like a sliver, you have a chance of screwing up if the monster hits you and not being able to do the super because you have no gauge left as monsters attack strain your gauge. And the last three tips, since the R2 claw anchors where you hit, you typically want to aim for the weak spot of a monster or hit the part that you want to break. So your pull attacks consistently hit that particular part. Obviously the vertical one is more consistent at hitting a specific part versus the oral one that goes all over the place. So, and second tip, be careful of pulling in too close to the monster. If you fail to attack before touching the monster, you do a small jump ruining your buffed attack and you'll need to hit R2 again to do the special attacks. And lastly, if a monster is about to leave the area, you can claw them and you'll be able to chase them much faster than running on foot. And yeah, that is how you play the Claw Blade. You don't need to have full gauge every time, but having more gauge will allow you to pick your attacks more carefully so you're not hit as often. A good claw player should never be getting hit, so strive to be one. But hope you guys enjoyed, like the video if you did, let me know if you're enjoying the claw in the comments. I have three other weapon guides you can check out too in the end screen, bow, wagasa, and staff. And if you don't want to miss weapon builds coming up, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Wild Hearts epicness.